Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a comparison video where we'll be looking at Serum versus Wavetable, the new Wavetable synth in Ableton Live 10. So I wanted to put this video together because I know right now Serum is probably the most popular, widely used Wavetable synth out there. We got Massive is probably second place. And then there's those hybrid synths that are Wavetable plus other forms of synthesis like Avenger, Anna, et cetera, all those. But just in terms of pure Wavetable synthesis, Serum versus Wavetable, I think, is a good comparison. And I wanted to do some strengths and weaknesses because I know a lot of you guys might be on the Splice version of Serum, the rent to own, or you might kind of be like, just thinking, oh crap, maybe I shouldn't have spent the money on Serum, or should I update to the new Ableton to get Wavetable? So we're just gonna look at all the strengths and weaknesses to, the, uh, to these two great synths, really. Now, I wanna get a little caveat out there. These are my own opinions. I'm not you know, being paid by either company to do this. It's just all my own opinion based off of being a producer and a sound designer. So let's check it out, right? So obviously they are both Wavetable synthesizers. I think that goes without saying. They're both dual oscillator, two oscillator wavetable synths. They also each have a dedicated sub os and they're subtractive. So that's where they're very similar. They're also very similar in how the UI, the GUI reacts in terms of user experience. That's what UI stands for. Um, it, they're both very reactive and dynamic. You get to see everything happen visually, which is incredibly nice. So right now I have the toggle expand clicked and I'm going to make the uh, editor here for wavetable full screen. So what I mean by that is if I change anything on my, my amp envelope, any of my, my LFOs, I see it all happen, right? Not every synth gives you that. Think silent, think massive. Like you can't see your filter. If we, go to, if we turn on a filter here, right? You get to see the line. You get to see everything that's occurring as you make changes. If you toggle through your wavetables here, you can see that you're moving through the different frames or cycles. It's the same with Serum. Even the FX or uh, if you're a Serum user, you can think of them as a warp mode or blend mode. And uh, you, you can see everything that's happening, right? So even though it's a uh, wavetable is a 2D, kind of a flat U GUI, Serum's all about 3D, they do feel similar as you're using them. And I personally love the, the GUI of wavetable. I think it's really easy to use, especially in this full screen view. All right, so let's go back to our basic shape here. And we're going to go to basic shape. And I just want to load up a basic saw wave and let's turn off our effects. All right, so let's compare the sound and the CPU. So. So they sound really similar in terms of how they're generating the default saw. Now that's interesting. Looking at the default waves, I'm not gonna look at all of them in this video. It's interesting because you can just hear how the ones and zeros behind the algorithm of the synth itself is gonna dictate the sound. For instance, if you just check out certain synths, like uh, you know, most people will agree that, for instance, Diva sounds different than Massive, and Massive sounds different than Serum, right? That's just because even if you load up a basic saw wave table on Massive and then in in uh, Serum, they're gonna sound a little bit different. The, these two synths sound pretty similar. There's no aliasing. The low frequencies sound good. It's a really high quality sound, which is nice. Now, it's interesting to note that the CPU is actually hit a little bit harder with Wavetable's default patch versus, uh, or the saw patch rather, versus Serum's saw patch. So the reason I say it's interesting is I saw a couple blogs talking about how CPU is more intense on Serum, and I don't agree. I've done a bunch of tests. The uh, Most of the basic functions in Wavetable actually hit the CPU a little bit harder. And by basic functions, I mean just the oscillator generating a tone, a filter, and then even the unison. Now, obviously, Serum, well, not obviously, if you guys don't know, but uh, you only have eight voices. You can go up to eight voices of unison in Wavetable. In Serum, you can go up to 16. So, obviously, and that's generated per oscillator in Serum, whereas it's a global thing in Wavetable. So, obviously, there's more voices in Serum. You also have an extra oscillator. Not to mention you have an entire effect rack. So yes, I do see how Serum can get more CPU intensive for sure. I can make, I can make Serum patches that hit like 60% of a, of a modern CPU. I don't think you'd be able to do that with Wavetable, but I think it'd get up to like maybe 20 or 30%. Now, some of the filters in Wavetable sound freaking great. And this is also where it's kind of like they're similar but dissimilar. So the sound of some of these filters are just good. 
They sound really musical, really nice, pleasing to the ear, but there's not too many interesting shapes. You have these different algorithms, four different algorithms, and within each algorithm, you can load up these shapes. And you have your common, you know, your, your common culprits. You have uh, low pass, band pass, high pass, and um, yeah, just, your, you know, your basic, your basic filters. So Serum wins in terms of just the sheer, flexibil- the, sh- the sheer flexibility of the choice. Right, you have all these different types of filters. You have some really unique filters like combs, all pass, reverb, etc. Now, where Wavetable actually kind of uh, takes it a step past Serum is that the default kind of basic low pass, high pass, they sound really good. We'll check them out in a second. And then also you have routing options because it's there's two filters. It's always pissed me off that Serum is not a two filter synth in the actual filtering section. I know you can use the filter in the effects rack, but you can't set up how your signal flow is routed, right? So here we can choose between serial, parallel, and split, which is really nice. So Wavetable kind of wins in that regard, but it loses in terms of just how many different types of filters you can choose and the interesting types like reverb, all pass, combs, etc. So it's kind of like a draw. That's, that's kind of what I've come to find with these two synths is that they're different enough where you're probably going to want to use both. So let's check out, let's check out some of the uh, filter types on this. So we have... I'm going to choose the PRD, which is a, uh, the filter, it's a ladder, uh, ladder filter. Let's turn the resonance down. And I'm going to keep the frequency up all the way. So check out how this hits the CPU. We were at about four to five, or about 7%, I think. Right, now we're up at 14. Let's take the SMP. Again, 14 or 13. And let's take MS2. Again, 13 or 14. So if we compare that to good old Serum, let's load up low pass 24. Right, it's at 10%. Now, what I mean by, uh, what I meant by a few minutes ago, if I load up one of these filters like a reverb filter, right now we're at 15%. And it's getting a little bit crazier. So let's look at the unison. I'm going to go to eight voices of unison. Turn the detune up a pinch. So I'm playing pretty big chords, notes of eight, to six to eight chord, uh, notes per chord. And it got up to around 9, 10%. Let's check that out with Wavetable now. So Wavetable, you actually load it on a global sense. Let's turn off the filter. We're gonna add eight voices of unison. And we're gonna go to, there's these different modes. Now I love these different modes. They all have their kind of unique sounds. Let's load up classic. Right, so it's got a really nice detune unison engine. All right, let's do one of these different modes. Let's go to Shimmer. So that hit the CPU a little bit harder than Classic. Let's do Noise. 16, a little bit harder yet, right? About 1% more. That one's going to be pretty... That one's not going to be any more than uh, Classic. It's basically the same thing, just the phase. I mean, that's such a chill unison mode. The position is really cool. Then we got random noise. 14. So, right, pretty similar stuff. Now, obviously, if I go into Serum and I go two oscillators and add 16 voices of unison per, CPU is going to be hit a lot harder. But I love the sound of Wavetable. It's, it's got a little bit more mellow sound in terms of uh, its, its unison engine, which is really nice. And those different modes are awesome. Definitely check those out and mess, about, mess around with them. All right, so let's keep going. Now, the next thing I want to look at, let's make this uh, full screen in the background, is the FX or the warp modes. I kind of touched on this. There's only three of them inside of Wavetable. Now, Classic is kind of a combination of a few. Um, FM is obviously frequency modulation. Classic is pulse, pulse width and sync kind of uh, mixed into one. So there's pulse width and there's sync. So it's actually, there's two right there. And then with Modern, you get, you get a warp and a fold, right? So it's two, four, and then five, okay? 
So Serum obviously gives you a lot more than that. Um, it gives you multiple syncs, bends, pulse width modulation, asymmetrical flip, mirror, remat, I mean, tons of different stuff, right? So in terms of warping your wavetables, wave shaping, that sort of stuff, Serum has a lot more, but it's still incredibly powerful with what you get inside of wavetable. So, I mean, you get the ones that you'd, you'd really want and need. FM, pulse width, sync, and then you get warp, which is kind of like a, warp's kind of like a bend plus and minus, and then you got the fold too. So you do have a lot, and it's just not as much. Again, Serum has a lot more features than, uh, say, Wavetable does, but all in all, these synths are really quite cool. So the envelopes, I love how the envelopes are done inside of Wavetable. You can see all three when you do your toggle expand. And even when you're not in it, it's crazy to think that this powerful of a synth is just this little of a user interface, right? So you can access everything here. It's just so simple and easy to use. And if you want to toggle expand, you can see all your, you know, all your information at once, which I really like. I like being able to see all three envelopes, especially if I'm setting up modulations. Now, the envelopes inside of Serum, the envelopes inside of Waytable, very similar. Click and drag, right? Super easy to use, super intuitive. Now, the LFOs, a little bit of a different story. You get two LFOs inside of Wavetable, and you get up to eight inside of Serum. If I modulate with four, the fifth one appears. And with the LFOs in Serum, you can click and create as many points as you want. You can create custom shapes, and you can save those custom shapes so you can recall them later, you know, very easily in this folder. So in terms of flexibility and power, Serum's LFO is a lot more powerful than, than Wavetable's. But Wavetables is pretty interesting. For this type of wavetable where you can't create your own shapes, it's still really powerful. So you have five different shapes, right? The culprits of, you know, sine, you get your saw, you got your, I mean, your triangle, your ramp up, your saw, your square, right? Your random steps. Now, within each of these, you can actually change them quite a bit by using these controls. The shape, so we can make, you know, the nipples. Um, we can do offset, which we can move the phase. And you also have the amount, which is kind of like your amplitude. So we have a lot of options to kind of shape, and we have a rate, obviously, which if you sync it, it'll be uh, in our musical value, and, or you can have it just be in hertz, right? So that's all makes perfect sense. You just can't click and make your own custom shapes, which I know a lot of people have gotten really used to with Serum, but this kind of falls under the umbrella of less is more, right? How many times have you been going to make a simple shape with the LFO and Serum, and you spend 10 minutes tweaking a sound or tweaking it, and you probably didn't need to? This kind of falls into that, well, less is more, you get on your merry way a little bit quicker and get back to production. So that's kind of what Wavetable is trying to, to do. It's trying to give you enough options where possibilities are, I don't want to say endless because there are certain things like I know I can't do in Wavetable that I can do in Serum, but they're, they're near limit, limitless. And that's because it gets you back to producing quicker. You can get lost in Serum for sure. So let's talk about modulation. I like how the modulation is set up in Wavetable, but I like how it's set up in Serum a lot more. But if I used Ableton Push, which I don't, I would probably like this a lot more because you can just use it with Push. So I personally have always hated modulation matrices because when you're just starting out, this is just so intimidating. It's just a bunch of empty boxes and you're like, what do I do? Serum is a combination of drag and drop modulation as well as modulation matrix, right? So it kind of fits the best of both worlds. Well, Live and Wavetable, they didn't go for the drag and drop. They just went for this have a hybrid mod matrix all your targets are always visible essentially um so like your you can pretty much see everything that's there which is nice so if you want to add a little bit of envelope two to your oscillator one position all you have to do is click and drag into that right and you can double click to get back to its default position so there's a lot you can do with a little which is nice that kind of fits wavetable's whole whole mantra right all right so the last thing i want to talk about is the actual wavetable function in each synth so plain and simple, Serum gives you a lot more options. It's more powerful. It gives you the option to create custom wavetables in a multitude of ways. You can drag and drop pic pic pictures, audio. You have your wavetable editor. You have a harmonic bin. You have none of that in wavetable. But wavetable does give you a lot of different wavetables. And the cool thing about wavetable is even though you can't customize and create your own wavetables, all these wavetables sound really good. They're all anti-aliasing. And so it's kind of like a quality assurance, right? Which is really nice. Serum, if you're making a custom wavetable, if you've ever done it, you know that you can screw up. You can get really kind of a, you, you can, you, sometimes you'll try something thinking it won't work and it works well. And sometimes it'll be like, this is going to sound great. And then it sounds like crap. That's kind of the nature of the game when you're creating custom wavetables. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. 
Well, you don't have that in Wavetable. And again, that goes with what I'm pretty sure Ableton's whole shtick was with Wavetable. They want to give you a Wavetable synth in a DAW that you can use to do a lot of cool creative things, but you can also use it simply and efficiently and quickly. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them up below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're not subscribed to the Echo Soundworks channel, please sign up. This is a show of support and also you'll be able to see all the new videos as we release them. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you.